Apartheid. Apartheid is a nasty word. Apartheid is defined as per the Merriam-Webster dictionary as racial segregation. The most infamous practices of apartheid were in South Africa and in America during the era of Jim Crow. It is specifically a former policy of segregation and political and economic discrimination against non-European groups in the Republic of South Africa. These are the barriers of racial apartheid. But race isn't the only factor that can apply inside of apartheid movements committed at the hands of the ruling class in various countries. Perhaps the most infamous and under-discussed apartheid movements, that is, the largest and most prevalent in the Western nations. Yes, this one is the one that goes on and has been going on for the last half century. And that, gentlemen, is feminist apartheid. Feminist apartheid is based solely on gender. Every Western nation from Australia to Canada to Europe and in the United States of America, apartheid against men is initiated when men were and are strong-armed against their will. This was done by the powers that be and is carried out by the police force or any that serve as the muscle to enforce the will of the ruling class and women who participate in it act to serve as the conduit for which the enslavement of innocent men can and will be carried out. This form of apartheid is carried out on a daily basis, and many men find themselves under the heel of the feminist matriarchy. It is state-sanctioned violence against those who resist, or those individual men who fell for the delusion that is modern-day traditional marriage. Yes, gentlemen, this is apartheid. I cannot stress this enough. All the criteria for it is firmly locked in place. All the unconstitutional family courts that have been allowed to exist use the following practices. The Duluth model, the doctrine of the tender years, VAWA, no-fault divorce, and the forced extraction of man's resources, i.e. the top two being child support payments and alimony. This is nothing new, and most MGTOW, MRA, and even many women are aware of this. But it's never been truly properly named in any way. The oppressive fem establishment seeks to subjugate men in cruel ways by separating them from their children, and thereby destroying their lives till a man has no choice but to kill himself, hoping that the hereafter will provide him with a modicum of peace and relieve him of his suffering. In any apartheid movement, the ruling class seeks to pass laws that all but guarantee the oppression of the class being targeted. Number one, legislation. When you have a movement of people powerful enough to usher in laws protecting them and granting them rights at the expense of another, this gets the foot in the door. Once you have the votes and politicians at the ready to pass laws, the rest falls into place. This is true for feminism when suffrage became a success and women were granted the right to vote as per the 19th Amendment. This opened the floodgates for the rest to follow. 2. Economics. When you have the politicians in place, you will have laws set up to create an economic system that benefits one group at the expense of another. During the early 1960s, there were protests by second wave feminists which served to create laws that benefited women economically. This led to the Equal Pay Act of 1963, which made it illegal to pay women and or men less than the federally required minimum wage, which was around the same time the Civil Rights Act was enacted. Now don't get me wrong, I am in no way opposed to ending laws that allow discrimination based on skin color. Every person, regardless of their background, should be allowed equal opportunity. However, this does not negate the fact of the economic consequences involved. This was what brought women into the workforce and cut wages in half. The Child Support Act of 1975 by then President Gerald Ford, which allowed state and local governments to begin forcefully extracting money from deadbeat dads. The rest is history. Or three, education. I'm not opposed to women wanting an education, provided of course they earn their own way. If a woman wants to go to college or learn a trade, by all means they should be allowed to do so. Many women went to college and worked professionally in the early 20th century. But by the mid 20th century, the ideal of the middle class suburban housewife and the nuclear family downplayed the importance of women education. Feminists knew that girls and women must be encouraged to seek an education, and not just something to fall back on. If they were to become, to be seen as fully equal, and within education, access by women to all programs, including sports programs was a major goal. In 1979, Title IX forbade gender discrimination in educated related programs that received federal funding, such as school athletic programs. There is also the matter of affirmative action, where women will be placed in fields of academics thanks to AA quotas. This led to Marxist feminist teachers to infiltrate the American university and infect the minds of the young people. Number 4. Sex and Gender Relations Under this, laws and quotas were passed to f that forced companies to hire a certain percentage of women. I'll put a link below to provide the evidence and you could explore more of that on your own. 5. Discrimination and suppression of men's rights. With these firmly set in place, the institution of feminism has become a powerhouse of social, a political, and economic system created to empower women at the expense of men. Laws like no-fault divorce and the Duluth model, men can be taken to the cleaners in the family court and virtually be destroyed. The Duluth model can be used by women to have any man she shares a living space with become arrested and taken out of his home. It doesn't matter if the evidence is on his side. The woman can literally have him taken out of the household in handcuffs and leave him to die in some gutter as if he never mattered. Hence why we in MGTOW expect
explicitly forbid any type of cohabitation with a woman. The apartheid that has been allowed to take root in Western nations is an affront to men's rights. Everything that I have mentioned is exactly what an apartheid movement looks like, and is all about. Feminism, as Barbarossa puts it, has never been about the liberation of so-called oppressed women. It has always been about maintaining the subjugation of men, the only gender capable of overthrowing an oppressive government. As long as the feminist ruling class remains in power, men will always be the victims. So don't buy into the lies of the so-called oppressed woman. Women have all the privileges in the world granted to them, at the expense of men, I hasten to add. There's many more examples of this, but you get the overall gist of what I mean when I call this apartheid. There are more steps and probably more things to cover, but for the sake of time, I decided to limit it to these. It's an uphill battle, brothers. There are ways to fight feminist apartheid, the most prominent two being no marriage and no cohabitation. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please donate to my Patreon for more content. Links will be inside the description below. Content like these is made possible from viewers like you, and thank you.